Welcome back to another amazing episode of the Third Shield Pokemon Go PvP Podcast. Guys, in this episode I have one of the best players in the world. You might know him by his name, Yunkus. That's right, he's joining us from Germany and he's an amazing player. I think he's right now placed ranked 1. Is, it, is he still a ranked 1? Either way, most of the season he was in the top 10 throughout the whole season. He's one of the best players ever. Zionic have featured him so many times and I'm so excited to have him on the podcast. He also kicked my butt when we battled and I shared that video on Monday, guys. So if you haven't seen it, it's in the description below. And please enjoy this episode. You're going to learn a lot from Yankas. So let's get started. Yankas, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. I'm super excited to have you because yesterday I just watched your live stream when you actually hit a rank 10. And that motivated me so much that I went on stream and I also did amazingly well, but because of you. So thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Thank you for having me here. Uh, it's been an honor to be invited to your podcast. <laughs> I didn't really expect it, but now it's happening. Yeah, it's, I, you know, I wanted to have you on the podcast for a long time and I've been watching basically all your videos, your stream, and also uh, Zionic always feature you. And there's a reason. And guys, if you don't know Yonkas, he's actually streaming and also recording his videos and posts it on, on YouTube. And the reason why I wanted to point this out is because you can learn a lot just by watching his videos. So I highly recommend it. I link it in below to check him out because he is truly amazing. And what I wanted to right away get into that you just reached rank 10. So what I wanted to ask you is that how did it, how did it feel, I should say? And then was it harder or easier compared to the seasons before to reach this rank 10? For me, it was definitely harder this time, uh, mainly because I am now more on the focus of more players. Like I play like always the same people, and I know my team, so it's kind of rough now. Like last season, I wasn't that popular. Like <laughs> nearly every good player knows me now, which is kind of uh, also a difficult thing. And uh, also. Uh, this season it's kind of different than last season because of the new point gain which is kind of iffy and last season uh, the earlier leaks did matter a bit more than this season and now it's like only if you're good in masters it's enough to reach rank 10 that's the only thing you really need and masters is my best league i must admit like i'm not the best <laughs> masters player <laughs> And so for people who are really good at Masters, this season is really easy to reach rank 10. Uh, but for people who are like generally good in every league, I think last season was way easier. Well, that's really good to know. And I'm excited to hear that because I'm pushing for rank 10. I like this season's pose. So I want to push for that and try to get it. <laughs> but, um, you know, I didn't think about what you just said, because what you said is, is that it's harder because people now know who you are and they watch your stream, they watch Zionic and they expect you to use certain time of uh, Pokemon and their movesets because they've seen it before. So in your case, I guess that's right. It, it should be actually way harder for you, but you still got it. Yeah, it's, okay. it's definitely way right, right harder. Like every time I stream, I have like five to <laughs> 10 people who are get, uh, coming to my stream off that and say GG. So they definitely know me. And uh, I nearly have to change up my team every time. Uh, for my rank 10 run, I kept my team for three days in a row and gained like 300 points with it. So it so was fine, but it's definitely harder. Like I see all the, all the same people. So yeah, but still worked out. <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs> I'm just happy to reach it. Yeah, and uh, I, you did a 5-0 as well, so which is yeah. also unbelievable because I, I, what I was expecting is I'm going to see a bunch of 3-2s, you know, and you're going to sweat <laughs> through them, but you actually pulled it up with a 5-0, so congrats for that. That was actually pretty cool. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it was so <laughs> difficult on stream. I must admit, like, streaming your games is so much harder than just playing for your own because you really need to concentrate and you still have the chat going on and you kind of need to talk <laughs> during your uh, sets and it's very hard to concentrate on the ballot like I was so concentrated when I reached rank 10 but uh, when 
like the rest of the stream suffered. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, I was going to say that you actually did it live on the stream, which is even harder. And yeah. then, you know, what I was going to ask you also is that so when you're streaming, do you have your stream on like a few seconds delay? Or if somebody is watching you and battling you at the same time, they actually can see what you are doing? I think it's like a four to five second delay, but it's not like intentional, but uh, they most likely can see what I'm doing. Okay, that that's good because otherwise people would go to your stream and then they just like, all right, you are you are uh, baiting me. I'm not gonna shield, <laughs> and that would be way harder. Yeah, definitely, but uh, still, it's still kind of rough currently because I don't have uh, all the same people. But sometimes uh, also people are dodging me because they're in my stream, which is kind of funny. As I say, yeah, okay, I know your team. We don't we better we don't battle because I have an advantage. So it's kind of funny. It happened to me twice. It's kind of nice. Yeah, that's that's crazy. But it's awesome at the same time. Um, so okay, so now you're obviously one of the top players out there. So what I wanted to ask you is that how did you get started with the actual game Pokemon Go and when did you get started with it? Uh, I play Pokemon for my whole life. And I started Pokemon Go in 2016, and I played it before it's even available in my country, so I downloaded it from APK Mirror. <laughs> and yeah, I really loved the game first, but then I had a break for uh, about one and a half years, so I didn't play there because I didn't really evolve. And then they implemented Chinese, and I <laughs> was a shiny hunter way before, and it was all what I cared about. And that's why I have so many dumb shinies pushed to uh, 40. <laughs> and then I introduced PvP, <laughs> which shook me again. That's awesome. And the PvP. So how did you actually get really involved with PvP? Did that, did that happen when Go Battle League came out? Or soon as PvP came out in the game? I was kind of interested uh, when they first released it. I played it with a friend, but I always got beat because <laughs> I got beaten because um, he knew all the moves because he had the game master and stuff, and he knew all, all effects. And I was so uh, I was just a noob. <laughs> I always got eaten and it didn't really interest me then. And I really just started PUP when GBL started, so I didn't play still for anything. That's perfect that you said that. I'm happy actually you said that because it's rare to hear when somebody who is doing really well in Go Battle League is actually n having done PvP before Go Battle League, if that makes sense. And you, basically the walking, talking exception, because you actually doing really well in Go Battle League every season, and uh, you actually got your experience basically from Go Battle League. So what I want to ask you is that for people who also new to PvP, what would be your like number one recommendation to them if they just starting out in PvP? Um, yeah, I was really bad when I started PvP, I must admit. Uh, I still hit rank 10 in every season, but uh, you really need to improve on your battling style. Like, the best thing you can do is record your battles and watch them again and see where you did mistakes, what you could have been made better. And also, uh, if you watch content creators, you can see what people are doing there. And you, and there are some certain things you rarely see from content creators because it's like, yeah, it's the thing uh, we don't really need to talk about it, but basically I didn't know that you lose a quick move when you throw a charge move till the end of the first season. And that's kind of important thing. Like if your opponent has two shields and you have zero shields, it's sometimes better just to farm them down. And you lose sometimes if you have throw charge moves. And you really need to adapt and learn. And it's just everything by, well, it's learning by doing, basically. Just play the game. Uh, see where you do it mistakes and get better on that. Yeah, that's literally the recipe to get better for sure. And thank you for sharing that. And you pointed out something about other content creators. And I just wanted to point out very quickly that I, that's perfect point because I was watching uh, Caleb Peng, who is by the way an amazing player. He was also on the podcast. You probably know him. Yeah. And uh, what, what, what he did is he was he was using, I think it was, um, was it Gengar or, no, I think it was, it was Hunter in Great League. 
and I was just watching and then I didn't know if you don't shield, I mean, if you don't throw a charge move and you're just gonna shield in a mirror match, you just shadow claw down the opponents and then you have all the energy to throw. And I had no idea that's the way to go. Same with Charmers, he showed it as well. And uh, in the mirror match, and I had no idea. So I always lost that lead until I actually saw that, how to play it. So it's perfect that you pointed out that to learn from basically watching you, which I learned a lot from you, by the way. Thank you for that too. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, that's just stuff you can't really see otherwise. You really need someone to tell you uh, such things. So, But we have such a huge variety of content creators who all do really, really good content on Go. PvP, so uh, a lot of people who can teach you to play PvP. Which reminds me, how did you actually get into streaming? And when did you start? And uh, maybe I should ask, why did you start? And then what do you expect to accomplish with it? Because you were pretty successful at it, so I just wanted to know. And of course, the audience for us to find out why and where you are going. I started two weeks ago. <laughs> which is kind of crazy. Um, and it, it all really started with Toshi shouting me out on Twitter that I would be rank one in the world because I was uh, only rank three, but uh, the two people above me were tankers, which is kind of, yeah, not really fair player. And my Twitter had like 200 followers and I mainly tweeted in German and I didn't really have a community and all of a sudden so many people just started to following me so, so much hype around me and uh, also so many people just covered my teams also before some people covered my teams like uh, at the end of season one King covered one team of, uh, I built with <laughs> I played with Sanchez, Bronzong and Jumpluff and I hit rank, uh, global rank 20 with it on my first real season, which is kind of crazy. And it was like uh, also a box team. And I had some hype before. Right? With uh, Toshi Street, I had like 700 followers on Twitter so all of a sudden because so many other people also shouted me out. And yeah, and then the first people said, oh, well, you can stream. And I said, okay, I don't really have the quality. I don't have the real internet for doing streams. And yeah, not really my thing. So I started a YouTube channel where I just uploaded some games, but uh, not commentated or something like that, just to show my games. And yeah, then I built a team with Double Water in Great Lakes season for, with a uh, Bionic covered. And I got more attention. <laughs> and then I built a team with uh, Magnazone, Shadow Gallade, and Venusa, who probably everybody knows now in Ultra Premiere. And I ran to rank one in the world with 82 points above rank two, which is extremely insane. I went like on the 23 2 streak with it. So at this point, my Twitter completely blew up. And I had so many new follow, and so many people just reached out to me that I should do YouTube a bit more and should stream. And yeah, then I started two weeks ago, and my quality was so bad, <laughs> but I really wanted to improve. And now it's kind of okay, and I really have a really really high viewer base that I just uh, uh, just started, and I have like two hundred viewers on average, which is kind of crazy. And I'm really happy to start streaming. Streaming is so much fun. And like Toshi is the person <laughs> who got me to streaming, you can say. Yeah, I, I uh, can believe that. So, which is awesome because obviously you are an amazing, amazing player. And if guys, if you haven't seen Yonkus and if you just haven't seen his stream, I highly recommend that you come by because you can see live high quality battles, which I really recommend because you can learn a lot from it. I love joining in, watching, just sipping on my espresso and literally watching. And I also have a notebook on my table right there. And I actually make notes while you're playing and have the matchups. And I literally make notes that, okay, this is what I do. This is what I did. And this is why it's wrong because you did this. I literally do that. And that's how I improve because I'm new to PVP. And I highly recommend that you guys check out Yonkers because it's just really top level battles. And then what I wanted to also say with this is that you, yes, your viewer base is crazy. And uh, you just started like two weeks ago and obviously the community, PVP community, which is real and amazing. We are very thankful for that, but they right away went and seen your battles and they are like, oh yeah, I have to watch this guy. He's awesome. And I understand why. So 
thank you for creating the content and please keep doing that because I think it's going to be amazing. And if Pokemon Go, which goes into my next question, if Pokemon Go is going to grow into eventually esports, you will be one of the number one players out there who gets into it, which is the question. Do you think eventually Pokemon Go will go into esports? For me, it would be nice if it goes to esports because I'm kind of good at the game, I must admit. So <laughs> for me, it would be good. But I guess uh, we are kind of far away from esports currently. Like we haven't had a season which went really well, we must admit. Like I think preseason was the best season currently. <laughs> With all the least mistakes from the antic. And we have still so many bugs on the game where we need like two seasons without any difficulty, without a real rating system, with everything working. And then we might can talk about eSport. And then we also need a better style of play, I think. Like random three Pokemon is isn't really an eSport thing, I must admit. Like there would be that would be way better if we go with the sort of style of show a sixth pick three Pokemon. And uh, that would be more like an eSport format, but currently we are kind of far away from that. I, I agree with that. I, I agree that there is a potential we will actually get there, but we are pretty far away from it. However, what I want to ask you, what do you think? With the, so the current season, currently we still have the ranking system, and I don't know if you read this, but Pokemon just released this info about not even season four, but about season five, that in season five, you're going to have a short season where it's not going to be a point system. What they're going to have instead is a, is a winning system. So if you reach X amount of wins, you will get to rank 10, something like that. Did you see that? Or, or I'm, I could be completely wrong, but that's what I read. Yeah, that's right. I read that article. Um, and I'm really fine with that because um, I compared my stats to other stats after I had ranked 10. And like, uh, shout out to Bellable, he had like 50 wins less than me and five games more than me. And he had like uh, ranked 10 two days before me. And I that shouldn't just happen. Like I have 50 more wins than him and less games. How can, how can this be fair? And that's only the case because of the current ranking system is so trash. Like early games really don't matter, and only like master leagues matter. So I think having a system that's only based on wins is like the fairest thing you can have. But I think this is only like a season to relax for all people because uh, I don't really think that they do that for a really big season. Like they only want to test it out. I don't think that they do it for a real rank ten because. It's kind of also lame, I guess. Like, you really want to do ranking, you really want to see where you can stand and how many points you can gain. If it's only in wins, you get there eventually, I guess. I don't think that you can make it really uh, difficult to reach. So, I have mixed feelings about it, I must admit. I think it's fair. I think it's maybe not that interesting anymore then. Yeah, I, I understand totally what you're saying with it too, because I have similar feelings to it. And also the, uh, the, what you mentioned, to give you guys, you and guys, everybody who's listening an example, last season, um, soon as the first week of ultra hit, I was at 27.88. I think that was my point. And then, because, I'm sorry, soon as when it ultra finished, so I was at 27.88. And then as soon as premiere hit, I went from 2788 down to 2100 because at that point I wasn't level 40 yet. So all my, uh, I didn't have anything maxed out. I didn't have enough Stardust or anything. So I was doing really bad. And uh, it was so crazy to lose that much points so quick. And then rank 10 last year just swim away from me because of that. But this season I'm able to compete because I have finally some Pokemon. But what you mentioned about the point system that yeah, you're doing so good throughout the whole season. You you basically working your butt off all the way until you hit premiere, and then like middle of premiere, all of a sudden the rating system changes, and with like three five balls, you just hit rank ten. That's a little nuts. And are you hear it right? Just making sure. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. Good. Just everything went quiet. So and then what? Um, as far as for uh, one question that I think. This is a great idea, I hope. Let me see, let me know what you think. But what do you think about, um, let's say this point system is almost like nonsense, basically. So what if this point system was only for um, 
the almost like preseason, or I, we should call it season. And then once a season is up, then based on the points, you go into a playoffs. And then maybe the playoffs would be different, just like you said, with this show six, and then just like similar to Silt, and then you pick the Pokemon, build a team, and then that's the playoffs when, let's say, I don't know, the top 100 or top 300, who knows how they do it, would actually participate. And then the actual winners, because right now we don't have a winner. I mean, you could be on the number one spot at the end of the season and the points update at 10 p.m. So you won't even know if you are number one or not until the next day. But if you would have an actual playoff, that would be really cool and win different prices. What do you think about that? That would be definitely cool if you have something that rewards you for being like number one or something or really good at the game. Like currently you have the leaderboard and you can say, oh, hey, I am the first on the leaderboard. And yeah, what does that mean? Like what does it give you? <laughs> There's really not, nothing behind that. So something like playoffs would be kind of fun. Like something for all the players who really <laughs> work their butt off <laughs> through the whole season to have like a really rewards for being like the best of the game yeah i mean i mean think about it if you're number one you're at number one spot and then what right so that's that's my only issue because you get the same amount of reward at the number one spot than the person who is lost on the list with the lost points but reach rank 10 so there is just no differentiation when it's really hard to be number one it's very competitive and you can just lose it like this so for not getting anything for that is for me it's kind of like annoying and i wish you actually receive something from it even if it's not like a actual price you know like eventually i think we will get there but it would be pretty awesome if you would get actually something from it yeah definitely uh especially because if you hit rank 10 many players just go okay you know i used trash like i saw those stream today with uh felix or not uh, 93 and uh, felix he was already rank 10 and he played with executor and just stupid stuff in master spam because he doesn't care anymore like why should he it doesn't benefit you after rank 10 if you hit rank 10 you're the final of the season now uh it's kind of lame to <laughs> watch rank 10s anymore because why would you like you can uh, learn from their plays but there's no real tension anymore like there's nothing after rank 10 which is kind of sad yeah that's a good point that's a really good point i didn't even think about that actually that yeah after rank 10 you're just basically done technically and then there's no motivation for continue on besides of course getting more points and be number on the leaderboard but you don't get rewarded for it so it's like kind of crazy um as far as for um, Silp Arena, are you planning on getting to Silp Arena this season or no? I don't think I will. It's like I don't really have the start at STDU that. I have some months powered up. I just only played one Silp Cup season. I went to 4 and 2 and I lost most of the games because of lag from my phone. Because when I record friend battles, uh, friendly battles, my phone just keeps lagging. So <laughs> it's kind of dumb, but you need to record because if the game is lagging, uh, you can do rematches, but nah, I don't think I will go into Sylph because I really want to concentrate on GBL. And I think if I do both, uh, like GBL wouldn't be as good as I currently. Like, I really take long to think about teams and do some unique stuff to uh, like threaten the meta. And I'm only like one of the top players, most likely, because I take so much time in team building. And I wouldn't be half the time if I do stuff as well. That's a really good point. That was perfectly put very well and very understandable. So I won't even question it because I agree with you. And I think that's great. I think you explained it perfectly. And I wouldn't even expect you to be at both unless you really wanted to. But then you have to put in so much energy and effort. But it really makes sense that you're thinking about goal battle league all the time. And that's where you build your team based off of. And that's why you basically uh, move your days around as far as for the battles, which gets me to my next question, which is what I wanted to find out is that do you have like a daily routine that you're doing from streaming to battles to, uh, to getting up and let's say Stardust Hustle or whatever, the daily grind, whatever it is, what, what is like your day look like around the PVP theme? 
Okay, um, I'm not really a name or a grinder in Go. I like I really don't like the current events and stuff. I am fortunate that my home is really good for PvP uh, for Go because I have like 15 home spawns and some stops and gyms directly at home, so I don't really have to go outside, <laughs> which is kind of nice. Uh, but yeah, if I struggle. In Go, which happened like four days ago, I dropped to 2650. Like, I really feel bad, and I take a lot of time like an hour, two hours before I stream to go through the games I played and through the meta and look for a team that could work in the current meta. Like, I really took take much time to team build my teams. And then I go through most of the important matchups and look how I will play them. Like I play many different matchups differently than normal people because I have a, like a different plan. Like in my current team, uh, which I really train town with, um, my real goal is for most people when they switch out uh, the Pokemon, they want to gain back switch advantage for me. In this team, my main goal is uh, to get shield advantage and an energy advantage on my meta goals. Uh, on my, if you my team, <laughs> and um, I really always try to get some more new tactics, not like the rock paper scissors stuff because I don't think you will benefit in just copying team. Well, I normally go through possible teams if I could use on stream before I stream, and then I go to stream. And sometimes I also go on PvP during my stream to look some more stuff up. And yeah, that's like my daily routine. That was awesome, because uh, I think we needed to hear that. <laughs> and also, I'm jealous that you have stops and pokemon spawning at your home because do you use gacha or do you use one of the uh, you know the auto catchers or anything like that or no uh yeah i have a gacha and i have a go ball plus i don't know what's a real yeah <laughs> yeah but this no you need to have ball. that yeah yeah and yeah that's way way easier and also with the current um increased incense it's kind of easy to get some catches currently some styles well, without really moving. Yeah, for sure. It makes a huge difference, guys. If you don't have a gacha, for example, or a Pokeball Plus, you need to get one. Even if you don't have a, your own Pokestop at home, it with the incense being boosted and everything, and, and the spawns are not being boosted too, it will make a huge difference in your Stardust game and Candy game because it just catches constantly. And, um, you know, uh, Yonkas, what I wanted to ask you too is that, so let's say if somebody is in the above 2,500, let's just keep it easy. So if anybody above 2,500 right now and they are struggling or they just wanting to really hit that rank 10, what would be your number one recommendation to those uh, players from using the same team over and over, change the team or any recommendations? I don't want to give uh, ideas into your mind, but what would be your number one recommendation for somebody who is trying to get to rank 10 and they have seven days left basically to do so? If you really struggle currently, record your battles. That's the first thing you should do. Then you should monitor which leads to your face and which team you face. And that's like all the meta you have on your current ranking system. The meta can change. So if you climb some points after that, um, also I always try to record your battles then because uh, you really need to adapt to the game. And um, don't just blindly copy teams from it someone else really take the time to team build look uh, which um, leading matchups uh, you could face with your team uh, see how you can handle that and you really need to uh, put more time on team building like i see so many people who just think okay yeah i'm at a good rate uh, there's a rank 10 player let's copy last team uh, it should be easy like, but most people who are just copies teams um, have the struggle that they don't really know how to use it and if you're one of the player who just copies team, uh, you really should uh, watch in a, watch all the matchups and really go into it. Because like uh, when I had my Ultra Premier team and so many people used it, I got so many videos of it from people who used it, and so many people did so easy mistakes like uh, switching Venusaur as a safe switch, which isn't really the thing you should do with my team. So. Don't copy teams, go for, for your own team, 
record your battles, watch your battles, see what you do for wrong, and learn from it. And try to improve, look out which uh, matter you're currently facing, and try to destroy those matter with some maybe offside matter picks. Like I used Memo Spine because nobody used Memo Spine, it was kind of nice <laughs> against the Dragon Knights and Tower Kiss and Magnezones. And really try to do something unique that fits to your play style. Don't just copy blind teams. That's really good. Thank you so much for sharing that. I hope, I really hope that people take action on that. And then, yeah, Memo Swine is not everywhere since you start sharing it. <laughs> yeah. So, so it's just crazy how they pick up on it. And um, you know what? Uh, where can people find you? If people want to watch your YouTube, want to watch your streaming, where could people find you right now? And also, where can they get in touch with you? Yeah, I have my Twitter, where <laughs> I'm kind of active. And of course, yeah, I stream nearly daily on Twitch. Uh, so you can find me there with all the, po the Junkers Pokemon, like but PKMM, and also the same name on uh, YouTube and on Twitter. You know, there you can also reach out and ask me questions. And please don't ask me if I uh, send you DMs because I won't. <laughs> Just ask me <laughs> directly under the, 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 the comments. Perfect. Thank you for sharing. I'm going to also link it in, guys, into the description. So you can actually just click on it and go to his channel. And then also, um, what I want to ask you is, well, first of all, I'm pretty sure everybody's wondering by now, but wanted to ask you, where is your accent from? Where are you originally from? I'm from Germany. So it's kind of, uh, I haven't speak any English for three years before that. And when I just suddenly started streaming in English and it was kind of rough, but I'm, yeah, I'm still trying to improve on my language now. But it's getting better and better. Your English is amazing. And then, you know, what's funny is that, so I'm originally from Hungary um, in Budapest. And when Pokemon actually came out, the only language it was available, it was in German. So <laughs> that's how I watched Pokemon. Even though I do not speak German, I speak some Deutsch, I should say, but uh, I do <laughs> not speak much. Yeah, I was wondering because you had also an accent, so <laughs> I, know, I know that. <laughs> yeah, the only place where I would be, okay, when I go to Germany is uh, the Hof, I probably say from the Hofbrau House because I don't know how to pronounce it. But that's where I get my beer when I'm there. And uh, I always go there in a, when I'm there, actually. The original one. It's my favorite spot. Hofbräuhaus, wahrscheinlich. <laughs> Most likely. <laughs> yeah. Germany is kind of known for beer. <laughs> <laughs> yes, for sure. All right. So thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Is there anything else you would like to share with the audience? Anything they need to know or any last words before we wrap this up? Um, just if you play your games, please keep calm. Like, just don't rage on the game. It's a mistake I see on so many streamers side. You just get getting so into the game that they nearly throw their phone away. Just keep calm. If you lose, you lose. It's fine. Try to learn from it. That's everything I can share. That's a really good point. Thank you for sharing that because I see some rage quits, reach, throw the phone to the wall and so many angry people who uninstalling the game and all this craziness over, just like you said, a game. So thank you so far for sharing that because that's actually, hopefully everybody heard that and they need to frame it because you need to live by that. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening and we will see you next week.